Это тема моего доклада, презентации. Проблема в том, что я его готовил на английском, и, в общем-то, я буду говорить на английском. Но если у вас будут проблемы с тем, чтобы понять какие-то вопросы, вы можете не перебивать по значимым местам и спрашивать. Окей? Okay? Договорились? Хорошо. So, known as just monoids in the category of endofasters. This is the title. And, yeah. and this is me. I am team with a top tail. Probably most of you hear of it. Um, this is my contacts. So if you have questions and you will need some more deeper explanation of the stuff, reach out. I'll chat with help. You. And let's go to the next. So, <coughs> monoids are just monoids in the category of under factors. This is very, very precise and very uh, concrete explanation of what monoids are. But to understand this stuff, you have to know what monoids are, what category are, uh, what under factors, and how all this stuff connected together. What this whole thing you mean. So, I will try to give you this understanding going by uh, bit by bit by monoids, then category and the factors and these two together as category of end of factors, one thing. So and we will start with the very very basic. We will start uh, with this. We will actually change uh, the perception on the function definition below and the way we write them. Um, uh, this part, this slide is actually for you know uh, not the guys who work with functional languages, so I suppose if you view it, it will be easier. But anyways, so this is the type of the functions. And for example, for function like the text string and returns the length of the function as number, um, this is the way we define it in something like Java, C sharp, whatever you prefer. Um, and the application of the function will almost always look like this. So forget about this stuff. This is the way we will use it. This is the way we will write it. So instead of having this column, we will have arrow between uh, objects, between the types of the strings and numbers, for example. And say that the length function is a transformation from string to number. And no, arrow is actually represents this transformation. Application of the function is almost the same without the parentheses. Um, and we, you know, we avoid this stuff in order to have less mass in the code, less mass in the, uh, in the way we write this stuff. So it will be easier for you to understand and to read. Yes. So I think this is okay. We are good with this. And let's go with the... <gasps> What's going on? Okay. Something is... Sorry about this. I don't know how to make this work. Okay. Yes. So I will start with category. Category is the very, very basic element of the whole category theory. It forms the category theory. It explains the category theory. And in fact, if you think of this thing of the category, it actually explains every structured elements that you have in the math, in the character science, in any, in actually in anything. It defines what is the structure of anything. And if you get the category, it's very easy. If you get the category, you will be able to comprehend the whole variety of stuff from, you know, in depth. Uh, not looking at the higher level, let's call it API, higher level things, but to understand the root of the stuff. It's very important and it's very helpful in your data -day work. This is the definition of the category. So category is a bunch of objects with added zeros connected by composable arrows. Um, you know, I won't stop here, but um, this thing has to, you know, to be explained better because uh, I know this sentence is very short and some may already see the pattern, but anyways, let's go to Let's understand what objects are, what arrows mean, and what the hell composition, composable stuff, and identity uh, has to do with this. So, again, what the hell? Okay, this is the slide. So what we will do, 
I will define a bunch of functions. You probably all kind of know these functions, use them, or wrote on your own. So our first one is very simple function that takes boolean and returns boolean. It's actually, you know, if you give true, it will return false, false will return true, this kind of stuff. Second, we will add five to any number you give and will return also five. Result is the same kind of function that will say if the number you give to it is actually a bool or is actually uh, odd or even. It's very simple. Length we already saw. And to lower it will just lower case the string. Okay, so how this will work to category? Um, you know, this doesn't help. This definition of the functions doesn't help. But if you try to map this to diagram, like this one, um, we will see the actual errors. So the errors we had here, this one, will transform to We'll transform to arrows here. So um, we had to know that you know was taken string and it's on the string. So it's actually if you map each type we had as dots, string, number, boolean, they will you know go from uh, this dot back to the same dot. And functions that take string and return number will form this arrow that goes from this dot to this dot and from number to boolean, as you can see, rest is actually the same. And this is a category. This is a category of types. The very basic element of computer science, uh, this is the thing that you use on day to day basis. And this is the thing, if you get, you will be able to comprehend the computer science and essentially what you do every day, how you program and how this all, all stuff works. So, Bunch of objects, right? Bunch of objects in this case is actually these dots. String, number, boolean. So each dot is actually the object. And NC arrows are the arrows that go from these objects to the same object. So to lower, they might be actually to uppercase. It will have the same type. It will go from string to string. And composable arrows. Actually, all arrows here are composable. So this is the category. Um, in category, we don't care about the actual stuff. So, you know, in the string dot, inside of the string type, there is infinite number of strings. There might be well, a lot of strings, right? There's infinite number of them. And we don't care about this stuff. If we go one level up, if we go to the, to talk about the types of the stuff, not the actual things. And we actually need this uh, types. We need these objects in the category theory just to have a place to attach our arrows. So uh, that objects here just to have start for arrow and end for arrows. And category is essentially about these arrows and how they interact with each other and how they can be composed. So we don't talk about actual strings or actual numbers, or actual Boolean values, or any actual values that have to be if we have. We care about only the types. And this is why it's called category of types. And it's again it goes on. Give me answer. Accessibility options. Same stuff. Um, this 
if we add to the definition of the category I had before two new elements, we actually will get the whole category theory as one thing and we will get the root that will help us to understand monads and the functors, functors and essentially the monads. So what we have to do? <coughs> we have to talk about the composition. Composition of functions. This is very, very easy for you because you already know that. Because you do it every day and because it is the way to write, fun uh, write programs. You can't write anything if you can't compose functions. Because in that way, if you avoid composition, you will essentially write assembly something, right? So this is the thing we have to do. We have to define composition. And category theory and category thinking and category theory defines the composition. It says that between <coughs> if there is arrow between string, for example, between two objects, and arrow between the second object and third object, for example, now case string number and number boolean we automatically get new function that will be the composition of these two arrows. New arrow that will go straight from string to number. And this new thingy will, this new function is the same type of the function as other functions. You can compose it further with other stuff. And it will work because it's just regular arrow now. It's just one more function that you get automatically from the definition of other functions. So the type of it, uh, the way to think of it, might be this, right? So length after this odd will be moved to this you know, Java-ish version of, uh, that will look like this. Uh, I don't really think you have to, you know, I have to explain this to you, but the essential part is that we don't have here number. So string directly to Google, the arrow between these two objects, there is no intermediate object between these two stuff. There is no Boolean. And this new thing is actually a new function, just right. So this is the composition, first part of the composition. Second part is that in the composition, when you compose functions, arrows that go from two, you know, from one object to the second object, and these identity arrows like to one. The composition of identity arrows with other arrows will <coughs> give you the same type. So if you had to lower and length, like in this example, and you compose them, the type won't change. The to lower length is actually string number and length is string number. So identity arrows composed with anything else will give the same stuff back. And this actually helps to um, Map all the whole category theory uh, with monads and with monoids, but you know, let's not get ahead of it. So, um, to give you an example of this, uh, if you have a string and you lowercase it and then take a length, uh, if you take length of the string right away, you will get the same length, you will get the same number. It won't change if it's lowercase or uppercase because the number of elements. Uh, number of chapters in the string will be the same. So this is one way to look at it. But you know, don't go deep in the details about the actual uh, actual strings on this. Care about types. So we care about that type is the same. And uh, in category of types, if type is the same, it actually means that these arrows are interchangeable. So to lower length and length, they can be used in the same way. They can be used in the composition in, in, in one way or another way. So when you have composition of this thing or this thing, you can actually swap them just like that because they have the same type and that won't bring the category of types. So if you try to go back, okay. If you try to generalize that stuff, we will get this as general category. So I was talking about category of types. Category of types is the thing that we care about, but category is a bigger thing. Um, it's much bigger, actually. Um, you can have category of categories. So it's like meta category. Um, I think about category is that it can form and can mean anything to, you know, to express any structure. And arrows 
don't actually have to be functions. They actually might be other ways of transformation and other ways to connect things. So the general view of the category will look like this. And with these two functions, with these two rules of the category. So there is a composition if there is L between two objects, oh, three objects, right? And the composition with identity arrows, like 1A, won't change anything, won't change the value. So yes, this is the category. Um, if you have questions here on the category, speak up. No? OK. Second part. Um, so we have this monolith are just monoids in the category of endofunctors. We know category now, monoliths, and we have to understand endofunctors and monoids. So let's go with endofunctors first, and then we will try to go with monoids. Endofunctors are easy. Well, yes, they are easy. So endofunctors definition uh, in simple words will be this. Structure presenting transformation from a category back to the same category. Um, if you try to look at it as a diagram, it will look like this. So we have the whole category of types as a dot here, right? Um, well, any category, in fact, is a dot. And then the factor is just arrow transformation, another arrow that goes from the same category back to the, from category back to the same category. And in our case, in case of category of types, we actually have very good ender factor that we can talk about. So uh, we will take maybe ender factor as an example and try to look at it as, you know, as a thing. So dot here is the category of types, the thing that we saw before, and maybe is just transformation of the category of types. And what it does, it takes any objects, right? We have this dot string, now we boolean. So it takes any objects wraps it inside of new type, it might be, this is it, just string or just number, or it will say that there is nothing. Essentially, you can think of interfactors as a boxes. So you take actual objects and put them inside of the box and start to care about the box and work with the box and care around the box. Um, what they actually give as you know, second level of of how they might be applicable and how they're actually useful, is that they allow you to apply the functions that work with regular objects inside of the box. So we have this length function for the string that will return a number, right? Say that the length of the string is like five or something, and you can actually apply that inside of the box. So maybe uh, end of factor has a way to apply the function inside of the box if there is a string inside of the box. And this is actually very helpful when you try to uh, build a system that uh, will be fail tolerant. So um, they, you can change functions that will work with maybes, this chain of maybes, um, and they will be applied to the actual stuff inside of the box only if there is actual inside, thing inside of the box. So, one of the ways to define this will be to actually check if thing inside of the box in this just something is string, or you can use pattern matching, which is much preferable, right? And then apply the function. Uh, this example is fictional. There is no language that will allow this syntax, but you know this is like to give an example. So yes, this is the end factor. Box is a way to apply function inside of the box. And if you apply that maybe in the functor to the category that we knew, that we saw before, the category of types, we will get the map of that category, new uh, part of this category. So there is mapped version, maybe version of each object. object. So we have string numbers, boolean. we got maybe strings, maybe number, and maybe words. And since uh, maybe end of functors gives a way to apply functions. We know we have the same arrows, and this is essentially why it's structure preserved. If structure in the category is the arrows, and if we preserve the arrows, then we actually preserve the structure. So, uh, this 
the whole thing now is a category of types. Since and the functors don't create new categories, they change categories in place, we got the, the new extended version of the category of types, which allows us to do much more things. We now have a, a very safe way to define division uh, by zero, for example. If, if you try to divide by zero, you will get none, right? In, in most of the cases, nil, null, none, or something like this. <coughs> Sorry. And now this maybe, we can actually say nothing, and you know, like, this operation is not defined. And we, we get safer programs, safer way to write applications. Um, so yes, this is the end of functor. Do you have questions on this? So functions uh, works only with uh, category of uh, category of maybe. Yeah, it it uh, it uh, waits for um, uh, for example to lower it. Uh, it uh, waits for maybe string and uh, it returns. Короче, функция to lower. Она ждет maybe, правильно? То есть она она возвращает maybe, ждет maybe, возвращает maybe. Она работает внутри мейби. А то, как э, дать значение и ожидать, что она либо даст результат, либо ничего не даст. Да. Поскольку мы... Окей, okay, я буду использовать английские слова. Где я не могу найти русских. Um, поскольку мы будем применять функцию внутри мейби, сама мейби может нам сказать, если получилось или что-то или нет. Если не получилось, она вернет nothing. И этот nothing будет на самом деле частью maybe. Это будет уже этот тип новый. Но функция сама to lower, это та же самая функция. Та же самая. Просто мы нашли способ сделать так, чтобы она работала с maybe. С этой коробкой. На самом деле коробок намного больше. Есть maybe, есть other, есть error mode, есть state mode. И они все работают. Это функция, это maybe string, правильно? Да, это будет maybe, это один из эндофунктов. А maybe string, это... Если мы говорим с уберением абстракции, получается, это string. Да. В случае с категориями мы точно знали, что функция нам вернет. А в случае с эндофунктом мы определяем, что нам либо один результат, либо второй результат. Поскольку... Почти. Поскольку в коробку можно положить что угодно, любой тайп, она, она полиморфична по типу. То есть функции, которые работали с стрингом, они будут работать только с мебельством. Но сама мебель полиморфична. То есть мы можем туда положить любой, любой тип. И только те функции, которые с этим типом работали, будут продолжать работать только уже в этой коробке. И это на самом деле позволяет строить а, очень большие и при этом очень безопасные системы в которых мы продолжаем работать с теми же функциями, с чистыми функциями, но при этом а, мы можем давать больше гарантий, не обработать больше ошибок. Допустим, если попытались поделить на ноль. В обычном случае мы можем вернуть нам, и тогда функция станет а, от двух типов. Она будет полиморфичной, она может быть number или же нам, если нам определим как свой тип. А тут мы можем говорить точно, что ошибка. И это будет безопасно для и, в общем-то, идти проще поддерживать. Интересно, а есть какая-нибудь вот тулза, которая построит вот такие красивые отношения функций с вот такими замечательными транзитивными замыканиями прямо вот из моего кода? Нет. Вот, ну так, просто интересно. Если ты мне заплатишь денег, да, это будет долго. Очень. Выглядит для презентации заказчику. Людям будет нравиться. Хотя ничего не будут кто-то понимать, потому что очень технично. Um, я могу выделить вот все эти штуки, которые использовал из, в своем презентации, как библиотеку к скетч, их можно будет использовать дальше. Но это отдельный разговор. Окей. Okay. So... Окей. Okay. Монолит. Категория, and the factor, monoid. If you understand from it, it actually will be there. It's, it's like the finish line. So, monoids defined in, not in the category, uh, category theory, 
they're actually part of different branch of math. But there is a way to talk about monoids in the category theory. And since we work with the category theory, since we know a bit now more about the categories, we can talk about monoids in the category. And I will try to show them to you as simple as possible. So the definition of monoid will look like this. It's a set of elements. It's not bunch now, it's set of elements with a unit element and a binary operation for combining these elements. If we try to simplify this uh, or go a bit deeper, we will get this stuff. So set S is elements A, B, C, unit element E, binary operation orange dot <laughs> on this set is a monoid only if these two laws can be applied. So uh, this first says that if you combine uh, AB and then result of ABVC using this binary operation, or A uh, with result of BC, they should give you the same stuff back. This is the first law. Second law is easier. How you, it doesn't matter how you combine this unit element, you will still get this the original element. So, a combined with E, which is unit, will always be E, uh, A, and E with A will always be A. As you can see, we didn't say about that. Uh, we say that there is actually uh, the combination from left and from right. It's not important. We don't care about these technicalities. But the, the essence of the monoid is here. We can go a bit more, you know, abstract and define some kind of types for this operation for orange dot and for E. We will use this letter, so try to remember them. Actually, don't. There is a slide for that. Yeah. But anyways, orange dot uh, on type uh, on monoid S uh, will look like multiplication of S's. It will return this error, right? Uh, the set element of the set. So we can't go beyond the set. We still work in the set. We just don't find a way to combine two elements of the set to get two other elements of the set. This element, the result element, is still there. It's, it was there from the very beginning. We just found a way to get to this new uh, to this element of the set by combining the other elements of the set. This dot operation, binary operation, sometimes called multiplication, uh, because we can uh, because this operation. Uh, of elements of the set, it's like combine two elements of the set or combine set set, you get new set. So you can see, you can think of multiplication of elements of the set. Multiplication not in the terms of multiplication of numbers, but as general multiplication, general thing. And for E, um, it's actually one of the combinators, but anyways, it's a thing that will return always element of the set, the unit element of the set. We can if you try, if you try to look at it as a function, it will be a very simple function that won't change, you know, won't have the, any complex definitions. So this is not helpful, I know. Um, this is helpful. Um, so strings are actually monoids. If we take string and concatenation as a binary operation, um, these two things together will form one of the very basic monoids. So Unit element is empty string, and no matter how we concatenate any string with empty string, we will get the original string. So Ruby can put with empty string, any number of empty strings. We will always give Ruby, right? And second part is about the order of combination. So if we combine Bunny with Love and then with Carrot, we will still get the same as if we combine Love with Carrot and then we with Bunny. So, this thing is one of the very basic monoids. Uh, they are actually much more monoids that you know. For example, uh, numbers with multiplication and number one is actually a monoid because no matter how you multiply by one, you will get the same stuff, and the order of combination does not. Same with numbers, addition, and zero. It will also form a monoid. One of the basics, and there is much more if you start to look deeper at you know, in the stuff. 
But yes, this is the essence, essence of the models. Так как композиция функции в контексте моноида, она имеет коммутативность только с единичной функцией, ну, с универсальным таким множеством, или между собой тоже? У вас там было вот там, А композиция Е e равно А равно Е e композиция А. Да, вот, 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 вот. вот коммутативность получается. Да, да, да. Мы ее не определяем. Мы забыли про нее. Мы не, мы не паримся про нее. Мы не определяем коммутативность. Как раз тут мы говорим, что ее нет. Мы, точнее, мы говорим, что мы про нее не беспокоимся. Потому что мы определили две разные операции. Слева и справа. А вот если вместо единичной э, функции, ну я не знаю, как ее буду называть, или на зеркале B, мы можем сказать, что А композиция B равно B композиция A? Нет. Коммутативность в моноиде не определена. Ага, то есть коммутативность только с единичной вот такой функцией? Нет, она не определена. Она здесь тоже не определена. Мы говорим композиция с единичным элементом слева, а композиция с единичным элементом справа. И они могут быть разными. Но с единичным элементом они всегда дают А. Потому что неважно, вот эта вот композиция с единичным элементом, только это мы знаем. Тут не так, что типа, мы определили ее, это просто типа, выходит из того, что у нас есть единичный элемент. Do you have more questions on the monad? Is this your post monad? No, 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 но это сам по себе использовать можно только как часть Польши, как часть эндофактора, допустим. Для решения задач про моноиды? Нет, для решения того, как типа получить монад, как вообще поделить монады. Окей. Все это вместе. So there is monoids. There is category of these under factors. In the original definition, we had monoids are just monoids in the category of under factors. So we have to define what category of under factors will mean. And how to, you know, the second part is actually how to inject monoids in the category of under factors. Let's start with the simple stuff. This category of under factors. Um, hopefully. Okay. <clears throat> So, we have this maybe in the front, right? There is more in the front that you know, probably. So, there is list in the front, there is I in the front, IT in the front, and if you, you know, remember the original definition, right, the original diagram, there is a category of types and there is in the front. And it's not very visible here, but there is just arrows like this one, and there is much more. They all extend the category of types. They all operate on the category of types. Um, and they form category themselves. These and the functors together. If you look at this diagram from different perspectives, yes, it will look like this. And this thing together is actually now and the functors on the category of types and category of and of And we have the arrows that go between the endofunctors, the morphism on the endofunctors. Like we have to list that will take an identity endofunctor result, right? And form a list from this. Or we have um, a function, this new transformation from the list to maybe element of the list. And these new arrows, they can't be uh, seen uh, from the in the original category of, category of types, they exist on the category of and the factors. And yes, so let's talk about the actual uh, end of factors. So ID is a box that will always have something inside of it. It's a very simple box. It's like 
if there's a box, there's actually value inside of the box. So ID string will always contain string and the application of the length inside of this box will be very easy. Right? Um, list is a bit more cumbersome. So we have list, the text string, right? It actually forms some kind of array-ish thing. It's not it's actually an array. In most of the languages, array is actually a list of the number. So it's always actually a list of the number. Anyways, <coughs> array. And to actually apply the length inside of the uh, array, we have to do a lot of thinking. Because array might be empty. And if you try to get length of empty element, of empty stuff, we will get error. We don't want that. Our array might be um, of multiple elements, right? And we have to think of it and define of each element of this array we want to get length. <coughs> so it one way will be to get on the first element. But still, um, we have this probability that array will be empty and head will return nothing. Or um, it will fail. Happens. So we can define this new arrow from list to maybe that will take list and the functor and return maybe and the functor. This is very new thing. Um, it's not like the functions we saw before because it's types that type on, on the left and type on the right are actually end of functors. This is a transformation of end of functors. And this is why it's category of end of functors. So, okay. <clears throat> Head. Head will look inside of the string, oh, inside of the array. But very much, if there is a x, right, the first element, if it is there, then it will return <coughs> that actual stuff. If there is nothing, then it will return nothing from the maybe. So head will have this new type. Yes. And length with this stuff apply will look like this. So from the list of strings, from ender functor on strings, to another functor on different type of number. And this thing is called actually, it has a name, it has title. This transformation, this type of transformation is called natural transformation. It's one of the very basic concepts. But uh, we don't have to get this stuff from, you know, on, the, on this level. But we have to understand that there are functions that operate between end of functors, these arrows that take one type of end of functor, might return another type of end of functor, and there's actually a lot of them. And we can compose them, we can get new stuff, and because, for example, if we had another function that from maybe number to something else, we could compose this new length with that stuff. So this is the composition of functions that operate on end of functors. And these things are from the category of themselves, category of end of so, nothing very complicated. Do you have questions on this stuff? Я правильно понимаю, то есть получается категория это мы задаем алгебру множеств из вот как бы наших вот этих контекстов, которые завернут уже непосредственно string, number. То есть мы задаем саму алгебру множеств и операции над контекстами. А контексты у нас являются эндофункторами. Ну, поэтому контексты. Категория – это только про то, как можно объединить все эти штуки вместе, как получить композицию. Как получить композицию да. где угодно. Так я об этом и говорю. То есть это получается, э, за, э, ну, называется алгебра множеств и операция над ней. По сути, вот так. Надо чуть проще и чуть точнее. Если чуть Мне точнее… Чуть точнее не получается. Чуть точнее – это только то, что есть композиция. Если ты говоришь, что это что категория, и она соблюдает вот эти вот категоричные законы, mm -hmm. то ты получаешь композицию. Все, не больше, не меньше. Это все, что есть про категорию, что все, что важно. Ну, получается, у нее одна операция, это композиция. Да. И два, две интерпретации. Композиция с identity и композиция с любым остальным. Окей. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. <coughs> Monoid in the category of under founders. <coughs> What does it mean? So we have monoids, uh, monoids and just monoids in the category of end of functors. We know monoid, we know category, we know end of functors, and we even have some uh, understanding of category of end of functors together. So what is left to somehow 
find monoid inside of the category of n factors. If you do that, you actually will find monoids. But it's a bit complex. Um, we can't really find the monoid, but we can inject monoid inside of the category of n factors. We can add something to the category of n factors that will extend the category of end of factors in the way, in the new way, that this sentence, one not in the category of end of factors, will actually have meaning. So to do that, let's go back and see what is you know operations on the monads that we saw. The types of binary operation, right? This is the type, and uh, type of this unit. Element. I have to say that these types, not types per se as functions, as of types of functions, but type of operations. So they are a bit different. This is why we have this uh, multiplication sign here. So yes, this is like general understanding of the type, not actual type of the strings or numbers, you know, transformation of this type. So, okay. How we can inject this stuff inside of the category of end of factors? Okay, well, I have answer. Um, and it is like this. Let's take very simple end of factor, end of factor list that transforms, uh, that has this uh, array <coughs> thingy, right? It's a return of you, uh, something of type array. And define somehow binary operation on that stuff. So element of this set multiplied, uh, you can think of this as in square, S squared to return S. How we can define some function, actual function, in the category of end of factors that will have some you know, similar type. And for strings, uh, for list of strings, it will be easy. For list of strings, there is a way to do that. Um, you can see this type has this string of arrays instead of arrays that will return string of arrays. It like string in squared arrays or something like this that will return just regular array of, of strings. And the operation join, function join, it, in most of the it's called flatten or flat, something like this. It doesn't matter how exactly, but there is a resemblance between the types here and types here. As you can see, we had S multiplied by S that will return S set will return S. This is the same stuff, but from category of n factors. So strings squared will return string error of strings. The second part is much easier. Um, this is a return function that will take string and just put inside of the singleton list, singleton array. So array that will have only that element as uh, you know, inside inside of the as first element as the only element singleton array very simple. So this stuff is easy. This stuff a bit more complex. And I have had said about list of strings, right? List list strings. But the string part is polymorphic. There might be other types, and if it happens, there are other types. You know, this stuff will still continue. Thing is. The problem is, return and join have, uh, in this case, are specific to list in the factor. For example, if you try to say how to return, how to get this unit element on the identity in the factor, it will be a bit different, right? Because we will, we will not get array of stuff. It will be different for each end factor. So if we somehow define this join and return on each end factor, we will inject the monoid part to each in the uh, at that point. So each in the factor will have this extension, this monoid part, and essentially will become monoid. The mon the end of factors that will have join and return of these types, or similar types, will give us the monoids. So join and return from the monoid. This end of factors being containers and preserving arrows is a mod. <coughs> That's it. <laughs> Questions?
какие еще примеры интересные, кроме риска, можно придумать? Все что угодно. Ну, с Мэйби, например, что Сейчас, если я вспомню. JavaScript Promise, да? Ну, с Мэйби, например, он может быть... Если ты хочешь взять из листа хэд, ну, у тебя приходит empty list. И ты говоришь, або при... Ну, как бы стрим, ты что-то видишь, ты либо там у нас, ну, что это empty list. Мэйби, мэйби, если это будет так то на первом уровне мы смотрим, что в первом уровне maybe есть что-то. Если есть, то идем дальше, во втором уровне. Двойной уровень потом мочим. Если нет на первом уровне, то мы сразу возвращаем на И таким образом из maybe maybe string мы получим просто maybe string. И это будет join на, на maybe. Лицом на maybe это будет просто just something. Это просто. А identity будет очень просто. Потому что identity String, один C, один C string, значит, что типа на первом уровне нужно идти еще чуть-чуть глубже и взять просто там из нижней колонки. Для, допустим, эм, error. Для error нам нужно будет на первом уровне э, посмотреть, и была ли ошибка, если ее не было, то пойти дальше и посмотреть, что была ли ошибка внутри. Если там ее не было, то возвращать значение. Если была ошибка на первом уровне, то возвращается ошибка с первого уровня. То же самое, как мы, только чуть-чуть иначе. Mm -hmm. Проблема в том, что join return мы не можем сделать generic. Мы не можем их сделать такими, чтобы они были на всех эндофакторах. Поэтому только те эндофакторы, у которых есть join return, для которых мы это определили, становятся монадами. Монады — это эндофакторы, у которых есть вот эти две функции. И эти две функции, на самом деле, дают очень крутую штуку. Они позволяют нам сделать композицию эндофакторов даже тех, у которых это полиморфичные типы отличаются. Поэтому на самом деле все принято мало. Но надо сами по себе ничего себе не представляет. То, что интересно на самом деле в монадах, это эндофакторы. И это то, что, наверное, очень многие пускают. Еще вопросы? Люди продолжают переваривать. Все, спасибо.